because everybody in this life cares about what's in it for them. They, they really do. But if you understand how to angle yourself to be the tool that they need for their business, that's how you build meaningful relationships. And I look at, you know, the game uh, at the carnival where the horses, you spray the squirt gun and the horses move across, they race across. Yeah, that, that's what this is. Know, like, and trust, yeah. right? It is, you don't walk, you don't walk into the community and dump your cards and now you've built a relationship, right? I think of any meaningful relationship you've ever had, it takes time to do it the right way, but w- why it's worth it will come all the way back to the beginning of this conversation was, you got to pick your lane in real estate. Do you want to get on the direct mail train, which is great. Direct mail train. I'm not bashing any other type of marketing. It's just pick your lane and you can build a business that's not tied to direct response, but you can build a real uh, relationship business that's sustainable through any market. And that's exciting to me because I don't lay on my pillow saying, I hope my direct mail campaign, I hope I get my money back. Right. I am Christina Suter, and this is the Real Estate Breakthrough Show, where we talk about the reality of real estate, the mindset you need in order to face the reality of what it is, and tips and tricks to get you moving forward in investing. I am your host, Christina Suter. Today, I have Philip Vincent with me, and I am exuberant about inviting him to my show. And he just challenged me before we turned on the video that I need to come up with a different word than excited to be completely transparent. So that's why exuberant is my new word today. I love it. Right? So, <laughs> thank you, Philip, for the loving uh, coaching. I appreciate it so much. Let me tell you a little bit about who Philip is because he is with a, he represents a company. He not only represents it, he started a company that I feel like you guys as my listeners need to know because it is a niche in the industry that I do not run across very often. So I have brought him specifically to my podcast so you guys can learn. So Philip Vincent is a, as a St. Louis native, Philip's passion is Cardinals baseball and blue hockey, blues hockey. You can see I'm not a sports person. (laughs) When he's not watching sports or spending time with his family, he's helping other families solve big problems. And that's why he's here today. While he started his career as a home builder and developer, he quickly transitioned to buying houses from seniors or their adult children as they transitioned to senior living communities. Over the last 22 years, Philip has bought hundreds of homes and has a passion for working with senior families. His sellers love him. And I, that is, to me, Philip, part of the uniqueness of what your approach is. It's not just finding listings and working with lawyers. It's so much more beyond that as, a, as an approach to a specific situation in life. All right, moving on. There isn't much he hasn't seen. So create, creativity and care are his go-to when it comes to buying houses and helping families solve one of their biggest problems. His entrepreneurial spirit and commitment to making the home selling process easier for seniors led him to create his nationwide network of moms, house certified buyers. He also has two sons and a fantastic wife, and he is here today to educate you guys about mom's house and maybe even help you, what's it I always say, grow up, stand up, and show up in being better in your career as a professional real estate investor. So Philip, welcome to the show. Thank thank you for having me. Uh, Great introduction. I I got kind of, I always get cold chills when I hear my own life described back to me because I'm, I'm giddy about my life. I love I always think the litmus test for a good life is Sunday night. If you're sad that it's Sunday night because you have to go start the grind again, yeah. then you probably have the wrong life. And so for me, my Mondays are just like my Saturday nights. I'm, I, I like what I do, and I, I can't wait to share with your listeners. Um, you said the word niche. And so immediately in my mind, I think of small, right? When, when you hear the word niche, right? I, I think of it something. It's, 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 it's a niche. Right. And I'm excited to tell you guys about the details of my niche. So thank you for having me. <laughs> Well, and you're right. It's not small and it's not meant to be small because it is a particular area, but it's very specific. So I really, yeah. I mean, normally I say, tell me a little bit about your background, how you got into real estate and you can do a couple minutes on that, but I'm going to be selfish enough to say, keep it short because I really want to educate today. Yeah. I, yeah. I've learned when I say uh, my, my brain glazes over when somebody says I started in real estate 24 years ago, but I did. So I, I, I that's not the point. The, the point is I led to, I did this business backwards. I started off as a developer and a builder and I worked my way to a wholesaler. And I think a lot of people listening might be, I'd love to be a wholesaler, then I can be a rehabber, then I can be a builder. Well, uh, we talk a lot about uh, fulfillment in life, about what makes us happy. And I was, I realized I'm 44, so two years ago, I realized I wasn't a a home builder in as much as I wanted to pick out the colors. And I put up with a lot of pain points in my life uh, to go do those things. The thing I liked was actually picking out the designs. And so with building mom's house here nationwide, I don't have time to be a home builder, but I was honest with myself about what that journey was. And today, you know, I bought 
you know, close to a thousand homes myself, but in the past year, uh, we helped 10,000 families with this niche and we're just scratching the surface. And the niche is simply if, if you and I are a brother and sister and today we find out that mom has to move into senior living, um, you know, I'm in St. Louis and, and you're in uh, California and mom is back in wherever we, we grew up. Right. right and yeah. so I'll ask a rhetorical question. It's where is mom going to live? Does she live by me? Does she live by you? Does she live by where she lives now? And uh, really, really quickly, we have to make a very, very hard decision is where is mom? The, the most important thing, let me be abundantly clear. The very mo most important thing is where will mom get the best care? Yeah. And then immediately behind that, the Philip and Christina are brother and sister analogy, we immediately go into, and how are we going to pay for it? And what are we going to do with the house? And what do we do with the stuff? Because that usually is the equity sitting there. It's not an asset until you sell it. And the person that we're talking about um, as real estate, this is a real estate podcast. So we're looking for houses that we can add value to. And every house that we buy, if they were all two years old and they were in perfect shape and they were shiplap everywhere, <laughs> we wouldn't have much to do in the rehab world, right? But that's not the houses we're talking about. Our mom's house, and I'll tell you why it's called mom's house and not mom and dad's house in, in a minute, but our mom's house is the one we grew up in. And while mom kept it clean, uh, she was a bit of a bit of aggressive collector, which is what I lovingly call a hoarder. Yeah. And, yes, and the yes. hot water heater's new yeah, and she got yeah. the new roof in 2017 when the hailstorm came through, but that, that paneling's in the wrong spot. That, that kitchens, for, you know, Christina, they've lived in these houses so long that yeah. mom got her new kitchen in 1991 because they moved in in 1978. And now it needs another new kitchen. That's right. And she's not willing to do it. The fact is there's an age where they're not willing to do it anymore. And it's yeah. almost appropriate that they not do it because it's so overwhelming to their system. And they have to memorize something new on a brain that's slowing down, not picking up. That's right. And at the flashpoint of what we're talking about, the moment that you and I find out mom has to move into senior living, now it's on us, the adult children, which is who I call us daughter Judy's. Uh, we're the daughter Judy. And now the question is to get top dollar, like the real estate agent asks us to do, are we going to go through a rehab on mom's house? And you said they're not cut out to do it. The HGTV show, shows sure do make it look easy to do. But in this business, we know our business is not. And so um, trying to get that house to the retail value, the question they're asking themselves is, how can I get mom to care as quickly as possible without leaving equity on the table? And there's, um, I'll just share this, you know, guys, anyone listening, write this down, the cost versus value guide. If you just Google cost versus value guide for the past 20 years, they have been uh, chronicling what it costs to do a rehab. And they have this magical thing that says cost versus value. And I'll just give you one example um, a new deck, a $10,000 deck that you spend $10,000 on, that's the cost. You get about $6,300 back. So you lose not half your money, but close. And, and, and it doesn't get worse with the scale. If you have to do 23 things on your house, very quickly, the family goes, why would I do that then? And, you know, and I'm not going over, well, that's exactly right. You please shouldn't. Uh, we are real estate professionals and we can do it at that much lower price. That is why we are all on this podcast. We're all real estate professionals. That is the goal. Uh, we're not a retail rehabber. We don't walk down to Lowe's and Home Depot and get all the other contractors that are high as a cat's back. We, that's what we do for a living. <clears throat> and I love that you do that. And and again, it's it's you talked about the flashpoint, and that I think is the critical thing. Like, how do you manage? I have two questions, right? Because there's the physical question, and then there's the emotional question. How do you manage to show up at that flashpoint? And how do you show up at that flashpoint? Because those are two very important to me, win wins, because knowing how knowing getting to that point is where they're ready, right? And there's a value yeah. there, they're overwhelmed, and yep. they need help, and you have the capacity. And then there's an emotional show up, which is a win win, because you're helping them solve a problem they're overwhelmed by, you're doing it in a way that brings them relief, and it brings you a win as well, because it allows you to move your business forward. So both of both elements of that point, I think, are really important. So talk to both of those. Okay, so let's uh, let, let me do one at a time for my brain, right? The first one is how do I find them? Or right, even better, you'll like this answer, everyone listening. How do they find me? So when you got into real estate, you thought you were getting into house buying, you really realized quickly you got into marketing business. We're all in the marketing business, right? We all that's that's <laughs> right. the business we're in. And you're like, oh no, I'm in the marketing business, yeah, right? And so marketing business, um, you happens to be real estate. You had the widget you're selling happens to be real estate but the business plan you're in is marketing finding your clients so that they can bring you and purchase from you your business model your service right. or your asset 
Thank whether you. we sell garden hoses or not, right? We would have to do that thing if we were in the garden hose business, but we just we're in real estate. And so for me, um, my pain point and kind of my history is when you're, you know, I've spent $30,000 a month on marketing to make my phone ring, right? And that the, the, the direct response marketing business, um, for all your hard work, you get to compete with everyone else. And so I've always been a, a, a learner or, or I, I like to look at things differently and go, I like almost like the, um, I've only had one bumper sticker in my whole life and it was, we'll work for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's a play <laughs> on we'll work for food. And, and, the, and the point is, is that I, I want to work hard. I just want to, I want to know I'm a fact finder. And, and I felt the pain of, of what that other business was. Um, a crazy stat is, you know, 90% of the people who do direct mail do one drop and they stop. And it's not because they made so much money that they retired and they're on the beach. It's because it didn't work the way they thought. And so, we're, okay, once you, we're in this marketing business, we do a direct response. So like when you talk about Flashpoint and, you know, if you do direct mail, does this sound familiar to anyone? I got a list. They're over the age of 65. They've lived there at least 20 years and they have equity. Right, right. We all mail to that list. There's a reason you're mailing it in the hopes that they're in that Flashpoint. And so the spray and pray model of direct mail while tried and true is still like, you know, a point half a percent still a decent open rate for direct mail. So let's flip all of that on its head and go, well, what's making them be at the flash point. And so when we find out that mom is moving into senior living and you and I are both in a scramble, I'll keep going back to you and I, brother and sister, we both get online and we're starting to find out and me and you are having these cussing and discussing our conversations and we're making a really hard decision. And if you're like, you know, it's emotional, it's such a drain. And so finding us daughter duties is hard because we're fragmented all over the country. So what I teach my students to do is find the stakeholders who are having the hard conversations with you and I at the moment. So go, daughter Judy is the golden egg, but I, I, I teach how to build relationships with the golden goose. It's laying the egg. Why? Because that is my lead source now. And they're working with these families every single day. Um, write this down. It's a million dollar sentence. Do you, do you ever have a situation where they want to move mom in, but they can't until they get to the household? It's usually met with a laugh because they're like, Phil, yeah, every single day, that's what we do. They're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, and I say, are you working with anyone that's going through that right now? And it's always, yes, I am. Or they say, I wish you would have met Fred from two weeks ago. He had a hell of a time getting his house sold. And so my point is, is that I'm teaching them to say, I fix a problem that senior living has because they know, you know, that they, they only live in senior living for on average about 28 months. What's stopping them from moving quicker is how they're going to pay for it. What do we do with the house and the stuff? And so I have taught the industry now. It's taken me two years to lay this foundation but they now see us as part of the senior living sales process. Hey, here's garden view. Here's all these amenities. I know you're probably thinking, what do I do with the house and the stuff? Here's mom's house. And, and, and let's talk about, now I'm going to get into your second part, the emotional. How do I meet them emotionally? Okay. I, I'm going to tell on our industry right now. Investors are known to take advantage of people, right? They have a bad reputation. We do. Um, we love that word, I word. We love it. We love entrepreneur and investor, right? We're probably all those things. I'm, I'm an investor and entrepreneur. So let me tell myself. Yep. Senior living, all, all they hear is, dun, 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 dun. that's all they hear is shark. When you say, I'm an investor, yeah. all they hear is shark. And then let's think about senior seniors for a second. Seniors are known for getting taken advantage of. Well, now, oh my gosh, I just built a business that pairs those two. So you just talked about the emotions and why we're on this <clears throat> is that my life would be so much easier, so much easier if I didn't have to care about which people got to work with these families. And I, I, I have to. And so my training is empathy training. And I want to say this very clearly. You can make a million dollars if you're very transactional. There's a million ways to do real estate. Go do those things. But to do what we do here at Mom's House, you have to lead with love. We're in the hugs and kisses business. Um, I, I think belly to belly is the way to do this. Even in the age of COVID, this is still a belly to belly hand holding. How can I help you hug business? Um, I don't want to do this virtually. And I, that's why we have, we work with the right investors nationwide that can lead with empathy. And if you do, Christina, the money is right there. There's a ton of money in real estate. No one's going to argue that, but it's how you get there. Not being transactional, but can you love them first, fix their problems, and then we all know that there's money in real estate. That's why we're we're listening right now. Yeah, I mean, it's doing the right thing doesn't mean you don't get paid. And doing the wrong thing doesn't mean you get paid, right? They, they really are not paired automatically in this world, even though maybe some people think they are. And I, I hope I've explained myself clearly enough that people can hear it. Like, 
oh my God, I've always been taught that doing the right thing means I don't get paid. So therefore I shouldn't ask for money. I'm like, no, that's not accurate. And doing the wrong thing as in being aggressive, being transactional is the only way you get paid. Like that's wrong too, right? There's an inaccuracy to both of those statements and both of those assumptions. And what I, again, what I love about mom's house and what I love about what you're doing is it puts it right on its head, which thank goodness we're transitioning to as an industry, right? I started 35 years ago and I remember when, a hard money lender was somebody who knew somebody whose name was, forgive me, Gino, and had a baseball bat, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. like it's totally transitioned. Our, our industry has transitioned and caring about what you're choosing to do, being able to sleep well, be proud of what you're doing, and knowing that you're helping people has become one of the standards in our industry, at least based in the community I'm a part of. And that's part of why I'm part of that community is because it's about the win-win. Right? So I, I want to tear that assumption apart, just like you're doing, which is you lead with the empathy first, because in that moment, that is the kindest thing to do. It's also the right thing to do. One might say moralistically, but it's also the successful thing to do. And there's nothing wrong with saying it's successful as in it helps me close the sale and it's authentic and it's kind. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> like, like, is that not exactly what we hope for? And every night you can go to sleep and you can be happy with what you did. You can feed your family. You can be proud of yourself as a human being, contributing to others and contributing to yourself. And you have the right to say, you know what? It was good today. It was good today. I did good today and I got paid for being good. Okay, baby, sign me up all day long. Yes. Right? And, and right. dare I say fulfillment, right? Did you find right. fulfillment in fulfillment. this life, right? That's Senior right. Living's taught me that the golden years will probably not be so golden and so seize the day today, right now, guys. It, love your loved ones right now because tomorrow's not promised to anyone. And Senior Living's made that very, very clear to me. And I, um, I love what I get to do. I do have fulfillment from it. And I think that's uh, when I talk to investors, I talk to them every day. They say, Phil, I want to get involved in real estate. And this just hit different. This just hit me different. I'm going to go, and a lot of times it's because they're going through this, Christina. They're, they are the daughter Judy's or their sister or their their brother-in-law or their son-in-law or somebody. They're going, our age group, we're going through this. And here's a, you know, we talked about the niche before. There's over 10 trillion. And if you guys don't know, that's 12 zeros behind that $12 trillion we just in real estate. T, not M, not B. Not M or not B, T. T. So, 12 not trillion. We did. We said dollars. In real estate that's owned by boomers and their parents. And guess what? Um, that's going to, you know, we always hear about this transfer of wealth we keep hearing about. That's not going to us. We're not going to get that money, Christina. It's going to go to our parents who are living longer and they want the they they want the nicest care and that care is going through the roof, the cost of it. Yes. That transfer of wealth is actually going to be that asset's going to be sold pre-probate. Not that this is they're not, they're still alive, but that money, that house is going to be sold because they don't need it anymore. It's going to be sold to pay for their care. That's what mom's house does. Yeah, see, I ran into a, a mom's house situation years ago, and it did not go the way I wanted it to go. I feel I still have sadness about it inside of me. I met this, this, it was a nice, oh, he was a great old guy. He was fantastic. He was, he used to run moonshine back in the 1930s across the wow. border, right? He just, he had the best stories, but he really needed to be closer to his daughter and his daughter really needed. It. And I said, Hey, look, just take what you want leave the rest. Yep. Right. And I thought that would be an act of grace. I really did. I hoped it would be an act of grace. Take what you want, leave the rest. I will declutter the house, dehoard the house. I will take care of the, the foundation issue. I will do what there is to do to make this house sellable again. And what happened was he, he ran into a physical difficulty during the day of moving. Wow. Yeah. Made me really sad um, because my hope was to give him freedom and to give his family freedom. And I think if I had understood more of what you understand, I hope I would like to think that maybe I could have helped with that moment, right? His physical difficulty. Maybe not. It's not in my hands, not my plan, but I'm just saying, you know, um, but if I know about you guys, I would have just gone, <laughs> okay, look, I know what the right thing is. The right thing is to get this guy moved safely, right? And you guys have a better understanding as to how to like, how do I take the asset? How do I take care of the asset, right? How do I take care of helping the family? 
So just that's my story. Just no, story. I, I want to take your your story further because you just prompted a thought that I had. I, I love absurdity and I laugh about how big mom's house is becoming and how we're changing the way people look at the senior living sales process. I didn't dream that big. And, and what you just said was, had I known I could have helped him sooner. And so we've already talked about it's fulfilling to help these families. There's money in it. But what we're finding out right now is there's a doctor, there's only 500 gerontologists in the nation. And one of them is writing a white paper for us right now. Her background is the quicker they move into senior living care for each month, they add two to four months under the back end. So let's just say the blended average is three. Yeah. Yeah. So if I move them in this gentleman, he's the perfect example. You, that's what prompted my thought was that had he moved in two months earlier, because he didn't, he wasn't going to fight with the stuff. And had he not, what was it a fall, by the way, when he said he had a problem, it's almost always a fall that that guy probably had on his and moving I, day. It was, it was, it was bad weather and I wasn't physically there. So I never found out all the details, but it was okay. bad. Weather and it, it might've been a fall. It might've just been that he got uh, exposed to the elements for too long, yep. but, but yeah, he yep. should move. If you'd moved five years earlier, four years earlier, three years earlier, that's where you're going. Go ahead. Well, and it's even down to the months at that, at this stage when he needed to make that change for each month, you moving quicker, it adds three months on your back end. So if we, if we can move them in three, four months quicker, um, that's what happens right now. In this analogy of you and I are brother and sister, and we find out mom has to move in. We start to scramble and we want to make a really good decision, but we have to check a whole bunch of boxes first. Yeah. And you better believe we don't pick the cheapest one. We pick the nicest one. A scary thought is this, is the, sh the chandelier doesn't answer your mother's call button. And that's a term in the senior living world that just because it's 12 grand a month and it looks like a ski lodge, that is not, that doesn't mean mom's going to get good care. And it's, it's a scary thought. And we're talking about something very emotional and all these emotional checkboxes have to happen. But my point to the story was that even healthcare is getting behind this saying, yes. And, and it's a, and just senior living in general is a weird business. And I'll tell you why. It's something no one wants. Everyone wants to stay in their forever home. No one wants to move into senior living, but as soon as they do it, they say, I wish I would have done this six months earlier. So that's that emotional thing. And I think what our company does, we keep using the term readiness. Uh, Mom's house advances the stages of readiness for families, almost in a Switzerland and agnostic, uh, you know, we're, we're, we help all yeah. Dr. Judy's and all seniors. We help them all yeah. to, to get the, what you said earlier, how do they get to that emotional? It's usually thrust upon them based on a fall. Almost always, that's what it is. Because you, my, my parents are in town right now. They're 65 and in perfect health. Could you imagine when they were just in town and I said, hey, mom, this weekend, we're going to go look at senior living. And she'd be like, what are you talking? <laughs> no, what are, which is using help. that's my point. You don't take a healthy mom to senior living. There, there's right. something that's happening, happening chronically. And usually that last fall was the one where her, her hip broke. That's and right. And that's what that's makes that's this happen, right? This is usually, and now there's pressure on us. And so- emotions is everywhere. And once again, when you, when you deal with somebody in an emotional state, I want to talk about daughter Judy. She's being quartered. She's being pulled in four directions by you move mom in. We're like, Hey, mom, we'll figure out the house later. We'll pay for it later. Well, mom wants to move back home because she's getting acclimated to her new community. Right. And I, I don't like the people. I don't like the people. whatever this turn, you know, it, it's, it's hard to change, especially when it's happened to you. Then the community is like, how are you going to pay us this 8,500 a month? Right. There's a lot of pressure on, on her to get the paperwork ready. Then her brothers and sisters who don't live in town are like, are you just blowing this out of proportion? You know, every, every decision she's making is wrong. Like she can't win, but then keep in mind, one of the hardest ones, daughter Judy's usually married with children and has an active life. And I hear so many, there's in fact, there's support caregiver support groups for daughter Judy's because this is so stressful. They use all their paid time off their husband's needy going, well, I miss, I miss you. Why, why aren't you around to do the, you know, us men, we get spoiled sometimes with our, you know, and, and, and I'm saying why is only because I'm going to use stereotypes. 95% of the time, it is the adult daughter helping them. The men need to step up, right? We just do. Um, I'm getting off on a tangent. That's the point is, conversation the, if you and I can have offline. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the point is, and, and, and so you know, the needy husband, so they're being pulled in four directions, being, and it's painful, all of them. What do you think happens when the real estate agent shows up and says, hey, to get 400 grand, like Zillow says, you have to do bump, 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 bump. She's right. like, uh, I don't have to, what? No, I'm trying to go back to my life. And, nope. and with cost versus value, when I empower daughter Judy to tell her brother in North Carolina, hey, this is all the things mom's house needs to do. We're going to lose money on every one of these. And here's this guy's offer with mom's house. Boy, that sure looks reasonable. We're, hey, it looks like we're going to net the same amount and do it in three weeks instead of unknown. And, and, there, and there's mom's house in a nutshell right there. 
And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I, it is really great because now you've covered like, well, what's the sales point? Like, what's the con- How does that conversation to daughter Judy look like? And how do you, the win-win, how do you show daughter Judy that it's okay that you're overwhelmed because it's accurate, right? We're not blowing smoke. It is accurate. And so let us help you by taking this price point, which is the same in, in net that you're going to, or just about, and you're going to get this solved quickly and we can just just you know get off your hands. So it's a win-win. You get the price you need to have in order to sell the house legitimately on the other side so that you as a company can stay in business. And you help daughter Judy understand why that actually is a win for her as well. She doesn't have to do the work. She doesn't have to stress herself out. She doesn't have to ignore her own children. She doesn't have to have arguments, hopefully, with her brother and sister, whoever they are. Right. And it's like, and it's it's not like, oh, well, gee, I'm just being selfish. I'm just being selfish. It's because I'm not caring enough. It's like, no, mom needs help. <laughs> like, let's the priority isn't the house. The priority is mom needs help. Right. And if that's what you really want, there really is a caring, balanced, thoughtful, loving solution. Right. And again, that's why I was so passionate about getting you on the show. So, but now I, I hear you. I okay, so we talked about. Daughter Judy, we talked about how you help her. We've talked about this, the fact that effectively it's a wholesaling business. So there's a lot of marketing. The asset happens to be real estate, but really it's about reaching your client, understanding the, your client's decision point, just like any business that involves sales. What about investors coming and working with Mom's House? I mean, you have a whole, I don't know, I don't know all the details about your coaching program, but you want to reach a whole nation. You want to have people on the ground in every city. How do you as a company fulfill that and grow mom's house? Is it, you know, is it affiliate? Is it marketing? Is it training? Like, tell me, like, you know, all, <laughs> take all the- of that. All of that is right. Every bit of that is right. Uh, we have a certification program uh, that people go through. They spend about 30 hours with us uh, to get that certification. And in that um, I have them, the term is browbeat. I browbeat them into knowing that if you're not the right person for this, it's okay. Um, yeah, I use it. No. It's okay. Um, and there's a lot of business owners that like to cross T's and dot I's and they'll never go out and build the relationships. And so I used to tell them that they needed to go out and build the relationships. Now I, I have this, we call it hire to retire. Uh, there's a social worker or care manager in your city right now that makes 30 grand a year has been doing it for 18 years is known, liked and trusted by everyone in town and would be tickled pink to work for you for 50 grand a year. So you, you can, even if you don't want to build the relationships, which is what it takes, I can help you. But my perfect, like I have a lot of power couples that come to my training. Like he's a nurse and she's a real estate investor. And then they go together. Oh my gosh. So like their, their head, their explosion. Like, yeah, we can do this because um, I teach them how to build relationships with um, over 50 job titles. Yeah. Um, but there's hundreds of job titles. And what I try to do is make you guys not waste your time with the people Cause I did this all wrong back in 2011. I, and I'll tell them myself right now. I used to say, I used to walk in the front door and say, Hey, hey I'm Philip. I'm a real estate investor. I buy houses from, from old people moving into nursing homes. In that sentence, I just said three or four things that are going to get me thrown out of my ear. <laughs> but, right. but, but, and then people listening right now probably think that's what I do. And it's not even close, not even close. You can't do it that way. It's a different world. And, 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 and I want everyone listening. If you're a real estate investor or a real estate agent, which I am both, you can still do this, but you don't walk in. I'm an investor. I'm a real estate agent. In fact, all they hear is shark when you say investor and real estate agent might be worse. And here's why. That's how they've been fixing this problem for the past 35 years. We'll list the house. In fact, I've seen people in senior let me go, go talk to a real estate agent. And when you figure that out, come back and see us. They literally take their customers and they put, they go like this. They put, you go figure that out. Cause we're not in the, we're in the care business. We're not in the real estate. And, and so then they can go out and then what's the real estate agent asking them to do It's usually let's get it cleaned out. Let's get it you know updated so we can get top dollar. Right. Yeah. And in the past two years, people have been getting away with a lot because just the market's been the most insane that I've seen in my 24 years, but it just stopped with that interest rate going up. Not that I want the world to burn because I don't, but the mom's house value proposition, man, it is go- going through the roof because as soon as the retail market slows down, now who's going to buy my house? I remember in 2008, 9, and 10 when people would beg me to buy their house and think about that juxtaposition to the past two years where if it was just, <laughs> you didn't have to have a pick, you know, it just sold, yeah. right? For uh, over asking. If you could get all the crap out and get a layer of paint on it, you could probably sell it, right? That's right. 
That's but, right. And so that's changing again. And I remember in eight, nine and 10, the houses that sat were the ones that were the mom's houses, the dated houses, the ones that sold were the ones that were decked to the nines and that, and, and that's going to happen again. And so we work in a good market. Let me be clear, but what's happening right now in the market and, 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 and to be really clear, COVID didn't stop us. A pandemic didn't stop us. Um, that you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube when seniors need to move to senior living this is happening for the next, you know, on a grand scale for the next 15 to 20 years. And I think that maybe that's one of the coolest things is I don't know the lifetime value of my senior living relationships to this day, because I still do deals with them to this day. So people I met 10 years ago, I've got text in my phone, we're doing a deal this week, you know, downsizing people, placement agents, you know, there's 50 job titles that, that I teach you the nuance of each person, because everybody in this life cares about what's in it for them. They, they really do. But if you understand how to angle yourself to be the tool that they need for their business, that's how you build meaningful relationships. And I look at, you know, the game uh, at the carnival where the horses, you spray the squirt gun and the horses move across, they race across. Yeah, that, that's what this is. Know, like, and trust, yeah. right? It is, you don't walk, you don't walk into the community and dump your cards and now you've built a relationship, right? I think of any meaningful relationship you've ever had, it takes time to do it the right way but why it's worth it will come all the way back to the beginning of this conversation was you got to pick your lane in real estate do you want to get on the direct mail train which is great direct mail i'm not bashing any other type of marketing it's just pick your lane and you can build a business that's not tied to direct response but you can build a real uh, relationship business that's sustainable through any market and that's exciting to me because i don't lay on my pillow saying i hope my direct mail campaign i hope i get my money back right right Okay, so we're going to jump tracks. Speaking of horses, we're going to jump tracks. So <coughs> bad pun intended with, you know, we're going to switch tracks because real estate's good, but it is an industry that requires a lot of you. The longer you're in it, then, you know, you've been in it long enough. Usually there's a point where the a cycle in real estate or a particular event in real estate or a partner in real estate, something happens that goes wrong. And real estate will call you forward. You have to step into this moment, this flashpoint, if you want to call it that. But you got to step into this moment where you're being challenged and it will challenge you. That is why it is truly the land of entrepreneurs and not the land of W-2s is because you need to be able to step up to that challenge. So give us an example of a story of where you were challenged and how did you step up and what did you learn from it? Great. Um, started off as a developer, home builder in 2008. I decided to build my first million dollar spec and I only lost $200,000 on that house. I call it the Lamborghini house because every time I see it, I go, I could have bought a Lamborghini with the money I lost. Right. Yeah. And was I dumb? I don't know. I think in life, anytime there's risk takers, you, you get the, the world either makes you look dumb or smart, but they only write the, the history about the action takers. And so when the, when the, when the downturn came, and I lost that $200,000, I had to make some decisions about what I would do. And so what did everybody get into in 08 was foreclosures, right? And yeah. even to this day, people when they say, hear what I do, they're like, oh, you buy foreclosures. No, no, it has nothing to do with foreclosures, what I do. But back then they definitely did. And so I started getting closer to uh, the REO market, the, the bank owned property market, like, uh, like a ton of us did in 08, 09, and 10. And that got me into more into wholesaling. Because remember, I started off as a builder and a developer. I wasn't, and, and, and I was doing things like driving for dollars just in my own personality. Like, I'm, I'm, I love real estate. On Sundays, I'd go to open houses, even though I'm a licensed agent. Like, I could go anytime, but I just love real estate. And so, you know, started getting into this direct response. Even I had a self limiting belief on what wholesaling was. I even thought back in the early 2000s that you had to put your house on the market. And, you know, and I think there, people don't understand what their options are. And I think that's how we empower daughter Judy to say, so I'm getting off the track. But so back then I started getting closer to direct response, having people call me, we do something with the house, whether it's wholesale, keep it as a rental, tear it down, build a new one or, or rent it out. Right. That was the options that we had. And so I kept looking at the stereotypes of my best sellers. And this is, we'll get to why it's called mom's house is that I said, man, we bought, I think we bought 66 houses that year in 2011. I said, what's, what's the similarity on these 66? And it's always like a story like this, you know, dad passed away eight years ago. Mom's been doing the best she can. She just had a fall. Now the adult children are trying to put her into senior living and they need to unlock that equity. And that's why they're trying to sell the house. And then, of course, one of them lives, you know, it's funny about St. Louis. I don't even want to rehab a house across town, let alone Cincinnati. Right. I mean, it, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even want to do it when it's convenient. It's let alone if it stays away. And so these families, they're looking to not get taken advantage of, but 
you know, and that was what was posed poised to me. It's like, well, well, who's going after the senior living market? And I go, well, I guess I will. You know, this, so for me, this was all born out of laziness. And that's why I think it's absurd how big this is, is because I hated working bad leads. I only wanted to work with people that actually wanted my service. And yeah. I talked to people like do cold calling today. And it's like, you're trying to find the needle in the haystack. And it just sounds painful and very, very unfulfilling to be basically spam, right? I don't want to be spam. And I don't want to litter the streets with with bandit signs. I, you know, and by the way, I'm telling on myself here because I've done all of these things to big, big scales. It just, it wasn't fulfilling for me. And so um, I don't know, I guess did I answer the question uh, that it was, it got <laughs> I don't me know. I'm not sure. Go ahead. I, you, go ahead. It, it's how I got to where I am today. How mom's house is here was that, and why it's called mom's house is that if you make it to senior living, uh, your men, if you do make it men, you're actually outnumbered seven to one. It's a seven to eight ratio, uh, seven out of eight ratio. It goes to senior living. And so uh, what I even find funny is if dad is the one that's still alive, adult children, be like, what are we going to do with mom's house? Because moms are so they're, they, they, they're their mom. They're who yeah. it's mom. It's mom's house. So I mean, even dad's alive. We're talking about mom's house. And so that's why it's named that. That's why our, our logo is cross stitch because every house I buy has cross stitch in it. You know, we're talking about a, a generation here. Yeah. I, mean, I think, I think, if I'm going to extrapolate, so you started as a developer, you got your $200,000 education as a developer and went, yeah, no, <laughs> the answer yeah. to my failure, my answer to my hard hardness was, yeah, no. And then it became, so how do I do this smarter? How do I do this in a way that's going to be more in my lane? Is that what you're and then the yeah, and, the story? And the yeah, no progressed even more. Hey, spending $30,000 a month on marketing sounds fun. It's a pretty heavy crown. To, to do that every month. Right. And so my, yeah, no, was even in that going, well, hold on, if I can get them to come to me. And by the way, building relationships is phenomenal for any business. And I see a lot of people building relationships with other wholesalers and other real estate agents. While that's a valid way to do it. I found those relationships to be fickle because a, a smart real estate investor or wholesaler is going to outrun me. They're going to figure out what I'm doing pretty quickly. And in a year or two, they're going to do it themselves. They don't need me anymore. And then I real estate agent, do you really think if I build a relationship with a real estate agent, do I really think I'm the only investor they're working with? No. no. And, and by the way, they'll do the same thing. If they're smart, they'll start getting into real estate investing and buy their own. So I found those relationships to be, they were great if they lasted 24 months. What's cool about senior living is I, like I said, I don't know the lifetime value because I'm still doing deals with them and they're still in senior living and I'm still the real estate guy. And I fix, I'm a tool for them. They're a tool for me. We help, we surround them in the vein diagram. We surround each other with all the tool, all the things that these families need at the time. And we all get to stay in our lane. Beautiful. Okay. So the question using if real estate is a tough business to be involved in. Why continue to use real estate as your breakthrough, as your financial to break through to your financial freedom? As a young boy, I started reading the Forbes list and it was always, uh, oh, they're the Mars family. They sold candy bars and real estate. Oh, they're this business and real estate. Oh, they're this business and you know, almost any rich person I know. And it's most likely because of the tax reasons, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's your duty to pay the right amount of taxes. And it, real estate's a, a phenomenal vehicle to um, allow you to um, make create wealth and not be taxed to death. I was just reading about uh, uh, the tax rate back, and I'm going to get the time wrong, but it was 94%. You know what I mean? This is in our country when taxation was coming out. It was, I think it was early 1920s. It was 94%. And so we won't get off on that whole tangent, but the point is real estate um, works for you while, while you sleep. It can pay you while you own it. It can appreciate, it can de depreciate too, but yeah. over time, it's only ever gone up even with dips. Um, even today, like uh, we're all complaining about 5% interest rates. You know, I remember even I'm old enough now to go, I remember getting six and a half percent and thinking I, it was a steal, you know, and it's all rel okay. relevant to what the day is. And we, you know, 2.8 is a distant memory now of interest rates. The, the point is, is that everything's always changing and I want to just always embrace it. There's always opportunity, even as the world changes. And I think with senior living, what I've noticed is that you know, I always say we'll work for hundreds of thousands of dollars. That was my bumper sticker. This is something to dive into and stay in. It's almost like my backbone of, of my life, right? Mm -hmm. I help seniors, but from that, the byproduct is I get to buy real estate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's not going to go away. It's not trendy. It's not sexy, but it's for the next, for as long as I want to be in real estate, that's going to be there for me because that's how big this niche is. It is. And it is that big. And you can absolutely use that as your long-term success and, you know, using it, like you said, breakthrough to your financial freedom. 80% of the world's wealth 
is in real estate. So one of the things you were talking about and you kind of touched on for a minute is like, it's like you've got a lot of wealth. Do you want to buy gold bars to, in, in order to protect your your asset or do you want to buy real estate? Like yep. really it's it's a it's a it's a depository for wealth. And the reason why it's become a depository for wealth is exactly what you talked about, which is even though it goes up and it goes down like gold, it goes up and it goes down, ultimately it always seems to have a higher value at the end of the cycle. It constantly wants to move itself in an upwards direction. And it, it doesn't have like 40 years up and then 40 years, like a like a the, the uh, mega bear and mega uh, bull cycles they talk about in stocks and bonds. Uh, and also the fact that stocks disappear. Real estate, I mean, real estate, that house, that piece of land is there. It rarely disappears. The earthquake, flooding, it rarely disappears. Whereas businesses actually do come and go and they actually do disappear you know i mean xerox right i mean that was the first Co kodak right? xerox kodak, exactly uh, kodak Buster, example, right Buster. standards so, standards in our life go away standards in our lives go away and so it's it's just fascinating to me that what people haven't noticed which you have noticed is that the reason why 80 percent of the world's wealth is in real estate is one is because there's so much bloom and land but two, it is similar to gold in that it is a depository for holding wealth when you are wealthy. And it's a place to put your money that does give you tax advantages. So I've noticed the same thing. So, Philip, let me ask this last question. What does financial freedom mean to you? If, when, if and when, quote unquote, you break through to your financial freedom, what does that mean to you, to you every day? That, I, that I'll probably become a pickleball coach and go to my kids. I go to my, all my kids' games. But my point is, is that I look at money as um, not for, I like nice things. Let me be clear. I like a nice house. I like nice cars, just like everyone else, but it's not my happiness. Yeah. And I think what money is to me is freedom bullets. Uh, they are my bullets of freedom. I get to do what I want to do. And freedom to get to choose what you do in this life is what, is what creates fulfillment. And, and my new book is called The Fulfillment Formula. I'd like to give it to everyone listening today. It's perfect, because that's exactly where we're going. Is yeah, get a hold of you, and, and let's let's bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, you guys, if you, I would love to send you. It, it's it's done. I'll send you a digital copy of the book. It's uh, info at momshouse dot com. Info at momshouse dot com, and I'll send that to you. And I also, I, we were, I have a game. It's called. Uh, <laughs> you uh, explain bingo. You got to explain the bingo game. Okay, so best leads bingo. Yep. Um, and it's got, a, you, you play the game and it looks at, I think 10 different ways to do real estate and it compares all the different ways and there's not a right or a wrong answer, but when you go through it, it makes you think about your life and what life you're building. Um, and almost always everybody figures out what business they're going to build. Then they're going to try to put their life around that. And I, I subscribe to the exact opposite model, okay. um, that you build if, and, and I think the question you just asked me, what does freedom mean to me? I love the question is. If money, and I challenge my sons, they're seven and are eight, nine years old. If it wasn't about money, what would you do with your life? Right. And that's the question I'm asking. And, and I think with senior living, I work very few hours for the results I get, and I'm very fulfilled by it. And so I'm I'm fulfilled in life, which gives me the freedom, once again, to go out and do the things I like, which is um, I got to go to my my nine you know my nine year olds. He pitched for the first time last night in baseball. Remember, I said in my bio, I'm a I'm a baseball fan. My son pitched. <laughs> And struck out the I mean he's he's nine right and just that that was a million dollar moment if we're gonna put you know just that yeah. that's what I would do with my time is 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 um, love on my loved ones because life is short all right so again people want to get a hold of you they can yeah. email you at to get the bingo game and, and the book and the book and the I'll book. send both I'll send both yeah send both. okay cool so what's the email again info at momshouse.com and if people want to actually become a part of mom's house because they believe in what you're talking about and what I can yeah. bring forward here, how do they do that? Simply go to momshouse.com and uh, below the fold to the right, it talks about real estate professionals. Uh, fill it out. And we'll talk to you. Uh, not everyone is uh, right for mom's air, a little bit down. Okay. Let's down. Bring it down. Here we go. So I'm, so those on the podcast, I've got momshouse.com. I've got the actual website up. <laughs> and so right. right there to the right. Click oh, on that little button. Fast. Yep. <laughs> go. get started i am in the real estate industry right here yeah so, we're, we're you know what's crazy we're looking for people that can do what they say they will do <laughs> that's all i'm really looking for is people <laughs> there, there's people out here in this world right now that are teaching people how to like renegotiate on the last day of the contract and all this stuff and i'm like man oh man that's not i want to be nowhere near 
that side of the business. And so in mom's house, the reason why the industry trusts us is because of this training. And so that if guys, let's, let's get started. Let's talk. And if this is, if this has resonated with you today, let's talk. Yeah, this is beautiful. Philip, thank, thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate you giving your time over to this. Uh, this is Christina Suter on Real Estate Breakthrough. You can see Philip's video on Yoku TV, YouTube. I think I just got approved for Apple TV as well. Um, nice. iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, and a variety of other platforms that I actually have not even bothered to memorize. But pretty much you can find it. Philip, thank you for your time. So, so appreciate it. See you guys in two weeks.